Why has only 5% of the ocean been explored so far? Between 5 and 7 million years ago, the earliest known relatives of modern humans emerged, and since then, it appears like we have never stopped at just one location. We were designed to flourish as explorers from birth. The combination of evolution, culture, and our needs has made us explorers and wanderers. We keep looking around and uncovering the land beneath our feet and the far underwaters. But the question that now arises is that after having spent so much time on this planet, we must have explored pretty much all of the land and water, right? I'll answer that question for you. The numbers might seem shocking to you, but about 65% of the Earth's surface, including 95% of the ocean, is yet to be explored. Just for your reminder, Earth's volume is 260 billion cubic miles, that is 1 trillion cubic kilometers. So 35% is also a significant portion. From the peaks of mountains on the Himalayan range to the depths of the Mariana Trench, there are many places that we have heard of, but they have not been fully explored yet. Exploring lands is much more easier than exploring the deep blue oceans. In this video, we are going to discuss how much of the ocean we have explored and why is it so difficult to explore the depth of the oceans. But before we dive into the depth to discuss the deeds of the exploration of the ocean, subscribe to our channel so that you can always keep in touch with information on the subjects you are inquisitive about and join the Deets family. How much has been explored? Why do we have such limited knowledge of the oceans? And why haven't researchers explored them all? Well, there are several reasons why exploring the water is so challenging. To begin with, the technology for mapping the seas and the floors is rather young. Only in the past 50 years or so have sophisticated sonar, deep sea submarines, research buoys, and ocean satellites been employed for ocean exploration. Additionally, as this technology advances, researchers have been able to see additional seas and map a larger portion of the ocean floors. The ocean's size, though, continues to be a significant problem even as technology advances. Think about this. The ocean is 7 miles deep at its deepest point. In other words, the surface under the oceans contains about 99% of livable space on the planet. So why is underwater ocean exploration so difficult? The reasons that affect the exploration process are Number 1. Limitations of the satellite The very first reason that makes the exploration of the depths of the ocean so difficult is the limitation of the satellite used by us. Only the crust of the ocean can be studied with the help of satellite imagery. Water levels, temperatures and color, which is a sign of plant life, can all be charted but below the surface our satellites are pretty much useless. Ocean exploration is very different from space exploration since we can't actually observe the oceans. Scientists can use telescopes to observe all that is in front of them to unravel the space. But we can't see very far when exploring the water. The depths of the ocean are impenetrable to light. After 200 meters, Sunshine Zone, aka Photic Zone, ends and light starts to substantially diminish, making imaging considerably more challenging. In truth, it is simpler to send someone to the furthest reaches of space than it is to send them to the depths of the ocean. Number 2. Pressure under the deep ocean Ocean exploration faces a number of difficult physics-related problems zero vision, extreme cold water, and suffocating pressure. All these situations are to be faced by the people who uncover these water at vast depths. At the surface level, your body experiences an approximate 15 pounds per square inch of air pressure. These forces, however, would begin to build up if you went diving or embarked on a journey in an underwater vehicle. On a dive to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is over 7 miles deep, 
you are talking about over 1,000 times higher pressure than at the top, argues Dr. Jean Carl Feldman, an oceanographer at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. That is the same as having the pressure of 50 super jumbo jets on your body. Additionally, he stated that exploring the deep ocean is incredibly challenging because of the extreme forces there. The fun side of the pressure. Divers enjoy decorating large styrofoam cups. They mark the cups using permanent markers and attach them on the outer sides of the diving vehicles. As the vehicles return to the shore, the big cups of the styrofoam shrink to the size of a shot glass and are as solid as a rock. Picture what would happen to your lungs and other organs if they are underwater without proper equipment to protect them from the pressure. Number 3 resources. Technologies for ocean exploration have advanced significantly. A more advanced fleet of underwater vehicles has recently been added to floats and drifters, instruments that rely on ocean currents to transport them as they collect data. This can apply to autonomous, hybrid, remote-controlled, or human-occupied vehicles. Expeditions are expensive. And even while the advantages are clear, the absence of accurate maps and data makes them more difficult to opt for. A significant portion of the ocean is also quite far from the closest stretch of land. Even before the study begins, the cost of sending a support ship out for a few weeks with gasoline, food, a crew who can sail it, a support staff, and shore amenities are all already nudging towards a high expense list. For instance, it costs about $45,000 per day to run the research submersible Alvin and its support ship, RV Atlantis at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. It is impossible to breathe underwater. There is a lot of life support equipment needed to send people down there. A typical diving vehicle can descend to a depth of 3 miles, 45,000 meters. However, dives typically last less than 10 hours with only around five hours actually spent diving. It might take two hours to descend to the working depths and another two to ascend back to the surface. This process shows how it's currently not feasible to explore more of the sub-aquatic area. Have you ever been underwater? Dived around to watch the beauty underneath the water surface? Comment down to start off a conversation with the Dietz family. Number four, medical issues. If you send a diver down, you won't be able to go very far before running into small medical problems like nitrogen embolisms. There are strategies to prevent it, but they are super costly. Anything that is being sent down or will be, must be built in such a manner that it does not get crushed, like a cola can by the hypothetical jaws of a whale shark, unlike in a case they actually meet one. Anything you send down has a non-zero chance of never being seen again. All sorts of things can malfunction, including cables, wires, and seals. Number five, ocean dark, cold, and unforgiving. It is really chilly down there. The temperature can be nearly zero degrees Celsius or even below. Although that does not sound like a major challenge, it does imply that whatever you put down, there needs to be designed to work in sub-freezing conditions. And if there are any divers operating such vehicles, they need to be trained to face such harsh conditions too. The Athotic Zone, a uh, meaning without, and Photic meaning light, which literally translates to a zone without light extends from 200 to 1000 meters below the surface of the ocean. In the Athotic Zone, the only trace of sunshine is a feeble blue-green light that is too weak to support photosynthesis. The aphotic zone is then followed by total darkness. No sunlight breaks through the darkness from 1000 meters below the surface to the sea bottom. Hence, there are no plants, as photosynthesis cannot occur. Animals that inhabit the abyssal zone feed either on the debris that falls from above or just eat one another. These organisms are as tenacious as the environment in the abyssal zone as they survive in such harsh conditions. The design of the diving vehicles must also take into account that they might face such creatures. A little scoop for you! 
Do you know of a place that's equally deep as the ocean, but way brighter and educational than it? It's our channel. Subscribe to it and make sure to check out the different informational videos available here. We have a pretty good idea of what it's like down there because of the oceanographic research vessels, submersibles, and unmanned remotely controlled vehicles that are maintained by universities, governments, military, and private organizations. It would take a lot of time and money to research every square inch of the ocean below, and it is likely to be super beneficial and quite interesting. This would allow us to learn far more precisely about the ocean, its depth, and all the organisms that live below. It will also require a whole lot of patience and time. Humanity has barely explored 5% of the ocean due to the risk and difficulty of diving deep. But once we overcome this barrier, a whole new world is going to unravel before our eyes. So with this, we come to the end of this video. You now know how much of the ocean has been explored and why is it so difficult to unravel the remaining depths. If you loved this video and found it mesmerizing yet a bit petrifying, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel before you leave so that we can fill you up on various other such informational videos and keep you and your inquisitive brain nourished. Also, write down the topics that you guys are interested in in the comments section so that we can make detailed videos on them. Till then, take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.